Well, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. And, uh, you know, this video is going to talk about substances such as kratom and cannabis. And I should say right off the bat that this is intended for those 18 and older. And I will have to make it, of course, for only adults. Then I will also have to uh, make this disclaimer that it's not intended to diagnose, prevent, or cure any disease, and that you shouldn't take my advice or anything I say seriously. And this is the world that we've lived in for a long time. It's become much worse since YouTube decided to, um, well, let's just say that YouTube is the world police as to what you can say online. And I'm not faulting YouTube completely here, so I'm going to get to the point. And, uh, what I'd really like to talk about today is Kratom and the reason why I don't talk about it anymore. Now, those of you who have followed my channel for a while might know that 10 years ago, I had started taking Kratom and I found it to be the most amazing plant. It wasn't too long after that, which at work as a carpenter for years, I uh, screwed my back up. I'm six foot three, moving lumber too quickly. And I developed a sciatic pain that was so extreme that I couldn't work for a while. And this continued for a period of years to where I end ended up just quitting my career completely. And <clears throat> in the meantime, Kratom was a godsend. It really immensely helped me with my pain. But not just pain. With the anxiety that I had been dealing with in my early 30s that just totally changed the way that I saw the world. I thought, you know, at least I can face the day without feeling like I'm drugged out. And I thought, this is an amazing plant. At the time, it wasn't well known. There was only one herb shop in town that even carried it. It was the Dragon Herbarium in Portland. But other than that, you had to shop online. And in August of 2010, I believe, I ordered from Bouncing Bear Botanicals. And that, I don't even know if they're still in business. But uh, I remember it was some red, uh, I think it was red vein tie. And that night... I organized my papers, cleaned up my, my garage area, and I was like, this is, this is amazing. Like, I feel motivated and focused. Fast forward a while, I started being, about five years later, after I'd been taking it, I saw so much crap on the market. I decided I'm going to take initiative and be a vendor. And I had a vendor of my own who had really good quality product, but it was so expensive. And I, he re, wouldn't lower his prices, and I was basically stuck paying, you know, up to 10 times what you would wholesale. And I said, but it's worth it for me, just to know that it's tested, it's high quality. Now, fast forward a couple of years further, and now with different organizations within, um, you know, in Indonesia, and uh, all these areas that started Farmers basically found out that Kratom could make them a lot more money from Americans than they could make selling cane or, you know, palm or whatever the hell they were growing at the time. So they switched over to Kratom. All of the Kratom that was harvested over the next few years was very young, immature, and it became a commodity that got to the point where the quality was so bad that I lost faith in my business. I had even started to sell good crate. I could still get it, but I had people coming to me saying, oh, you know, what? You know, your stuff's way too expensive, you know? And I said, I know, I'm sorry, you know, it sucks, but that's the only way I can, you know, make it worth it to pay for my business license and taxes. And if you want to take um, any type of payments, you have to be a high-risk merchant, which means you pay a fortune in credit card fees. So most Kratom vendors were only taking, like, PayPal, things like that. Then PayPal terminated all our accounts, held my funds for six months. Long story short, I got very discouraged about being a vendor. and But I continued on, and then I started ordering some decent stuff at a moderate price so I could sell it cheaper. And a couple months ago, I decided I'm just going to stop altogether for a minute and rethink this. I've been on, obviously, any of my customers know that I haven't had any in about two months. And uh, that changed today. I ordered from my old vendor, paid the top dollar, and I have a bunch of the old Red Cali and the Potent Indo here. Getting ready, but it's going to be in smaller quantities. But I can't talk about that at all here because... I'm not here to promote myself. 
See, that's one of the things that YouTube won't allow you to do. And therefore, I can't put my link in there or anything. And it's it's become frustrating for not just Kratom vendors, but even, say, CBD vendors, things like that. You not can't not only can you not talk about these plants on YouTube anymore, but you can't even talk about the benefits of them. There used to be a lot of harm reduction channels that basically just gave up. And I know a lot of people said they've gone to BitChute and these other platforms, Vimeo, whatever it might be, I don't know. It's hard for people to switch up. Changing platforms is very difficult to build the same audience, and it's a uh, it's something you can do, but you know once it gets too big, it's going to be the same problem. And it's one of those side effects of having an internet, you know. Uh, you have these monstrous websites that have so many people using them that you start as a society saying, well, should we limit what people say? And it's a nightmare. People can't talk about not just p drugs or, or plants, but politics can't talk about health, you know, cures or anything else besides the mainstream narrative. I totally understand that. It sucks. And there's not a lot we can do. I'm stuck using YouTube because it's the best I have to confirm, you know, my information that I want to share. But um, I just have to be more wary about it. Um, the one main thing is that I can talk about this because I don't expect to get ad revenue. The minute you talk about Kratom, you're demonetized. Um... So here's the thing. I always tested my product personally before I would put it on the market. So it's going to be about two or three days before I start, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking at it thinking, okay, I, I know it's good because it's from my usual vendor, but I need to try it myself. So we're going to do that. So far, so good. I'm pleased with it. Uh, it just came today, but I'm going to move into you know, back into smaller quantities, I'm not going to be able to have fulls of kilos, things like that. But beyond that, one of the main things that I really like about, you know, I am fascinated with herbs and growing plants. Like, for example, I have this this leaf that I just pulled off the tobacco plant earlier. I, I was like, well, this is a really beautiful example of a, of a tobacco leaf. And this is actually from a um, strain called Nicotiana rustica. And it's basically traditional shamanic tobacco it's very 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 it's up to nine or ten times more potent than your standard tobacco and it's only used for ceremonies and uh cer ceremonial use rather <laughs> uh yeah it's extremely extremely potent i've always been really into the very best of the best um same with cannabis you know i was i had various strains that i created myself i was always looking for these just right genetics to have the strain that did the best because i know thc is just one part of the plan a uh, very small part of the big picture and the what you would call the entourage effect and man i had some amazing cannabis in the past that it made me it makes me just disgusted with what i see in the store a lot today uh, in the places where it is legal, but there's still some good stuff out there, but it's really really difficult And if you do find the really good stuff, it's very expensive And the same thing is happening now with Kratom because once something becomes a commodity um, You know it just it sucks. It really sucks. You know it's 10 years now as a Kratom user and 30 years as a cannabis user the one thing I've learned is moderation, you know there are a lot of people who point and judge at those who take plants. And there may be the same people who take pharmaceuticals because, well, my doctor said it's okay. You know, I've been taking benzodiazepines for the last 20 years, but it's okay because my doc said it was cool. Or you're taking Paxil or, you know, uh, Prozac. I mean, think about this. So many people, there are so many people in America who are sedated by you know, the pharmaceutical industry, it really is disgusting because a lot of these people don't need it. I mean, the idea that humans all of a sudden over a couple decades can find these magic cures for all of humans' problems, I mean, it's just naivety. So I don't take any pharmaceuticals, but I do use a few plants because I find them to be beneficial in my life. And a lot of others do too. 
So the fact that we can't talk about these things, that credit agencies won't work with Kratom vendors or CBD or cannabis vendors, that they have to deal with all their money in cash and take it down to the bank, it's just preposterous. You know, when something becomes legal in a state or it still is legal and isn't banned, it should be free to be dealt with in commerce, you know. And so I have to overcome all that. I'm going to be putting up um, what I have on my website probably in, in a day or two. Um, but I just wanted to let the people know who were my subscribers or my customers and also just talk about the plants in general that it's becoming harder to talk about these things. And if I get a strike on this, who knows? I mean, it's, it's difficult to say what the algorithm favors and what it doesn't. Um, but the unfortunate circumstance is that a lot of informational videos get pulled down with disinformation, with uh, marketing, with all the different bullshit that you see out there. So I just wanted to talk briefly about it. I think that personally, I guess if I were to talk about Kratom, I need to address what I think about the plant. It can be addictive, of course, and that's an important thing to consider. You should know that addiction is defined as something that holds you back from your daily life or prevents you from living fully or harms those around you. When it comes to Kratom use, that's never really been an issue for me, nor has cannabis, but for some people it probably could be. People with addictive personalities can become self-destructive taking these plants. And that's, uh, they're, you know, uh, it's unfortunate, but people can also become addicted to shopping and, and a million other things that make them feel good. Uh, the physical harm that comes from it is so minimal that I can't see it. When people talk about it causes liver damage or this or that, I would imagine it would be additives or metals in the soil. I can't be sure. I don't know. I'm not a pharmacologist. I try to understand botany and how these plants work and so far I haven't found anything to indicate that cannabis or that uh, either cannabis nor uh, kratom cause any type of bodily harm other than if they have impurities or they're grown with heavy metals, fertilizers, etc, etc, or sprayed with poisons, neem oil, insecticides. And so I guess that's my final verdict that I think I would prefer to use plants in nature over what mankind has come up with and that's not naive I think that I've really thought this over over the years you know I don't believe that everything natural is going to heal you a lot of things can harm you but with these two plants it's amazing how much hatred there's been for cannabis and kratom over the years and I find it pretty shameful and I think that we're overcoming it now especially with the opiate crisis and how much kratom has helped people who are trying to overcome the use of heroin Oxycontin, these systems, these addictions that, for the most part in recent years or decades, it was the companies, the pharmaceutical companies that caused, such as Purdue Pharma and Oxycontin. So I'll leave it at that. To each his own. Hopefully people understand this video is just for informational purposes, and uh, I'm not in intending anybody go out and take or do anything. You know, it's sad that we have to say that. But that's the world we're in right now. So any questions or comments, please leave them. I'll be glad to answer them. I might be doing another Kratom Q&A pretty soon. I just felt like nobody cared anymore. Like, people just wanted cheap Kratom. And, you know, it just became a market of who's got the cheapest crap. And a lot of these vendors literally sit on tons. You don't know how many times I've been offered, like, 2,000 pounds at a time. I'm like, dude, I'm not going to buy that much. I, I mean... If I was going to sell that much, maybe, but some pe that means that they've got, say, 200,000 tons, whatever it might be, you know. They buy warehouses full of this stuff from these farms. Meanwhile, there are still some old-school, old-growth farmers. So you consider it the cream of the crop with cannabis, you can tell by smelling it and looking at it, usually. But with Kratom, you, you really can't until you have a really good understanding of the plant. And then you can tell when a plant is old-school. When we used to get the old red vein tie, that shit was amazing. And so I feel the same way about the potent Indo and the red Cali, which are the ones that I picked up. And um, I'll hopefully get more because it's, uh, it's an amazing plant for me and I know for a lot of others. And I want to make sure that I can help supply those who are asking. And because I really 
you know, it's not just that. I actually have some mushroom blends I'd like to introduce too and start making capsules again, like the Athena blend, which was a, a blend of basically herbs and mushroom blend that I found energizing and something that it was like a nootropic. It was amazing. I loved it. it had L-theanine and L-tyrosine and some other things in it. But if I do make that blend again, I'll definitely let people know because people have asked about it can still up till like a week ago. Um, I guess it comes down to honesty. I'm just, la I, I don't, I'm lazy and I'm scared sometimes. I don't get the things done that I need to get done. I, fe I fear like I've spent so much money trying to start my business and buying things that I didn't need that I'm afraid that if I make a blend, then I won't sell it. Because I still have a box of herbs down here, like sample pack that I was just going to give away to people. And they're like two or three years old now. So I'm like, I know that they're still viable, but I'm not going to give away old herbs. So I end up getting stuck with a whole bucket. I've got like 10 kilos of this old kratom that has been around for like three years here. I'm like, well, what do I do with it? I could turn it into extract one day, but that's for another time. Um, I just wanted to talk about herbs for a minute, you know? Like I said, it's a subject that I know best, but talk about least. I love talking about plants and plant medicine. I just feel like there's nowhere to talk about it anymore. And um, so I'll talk to you all later. Thanks for listening. Be well. Take care of something and somebody and say something nice to someone today. Bye.